Disney stores. One of the things I learned when I was learning how to do a business was you have to have meetings. I eventually brought in a business coach. She, she looked at the business and what we were doing at the time and she helped me see the need for organization and uh, we instituted uh, weekly meetings, a Tuesday meeting. So everybody has a role in this meeting and uh, it's turned out to be one of the best things. It keeps everybody on the same page and it keeps everybody informed about what's going on. So um, those Tuesday morning meetings are crucial in this business. It's just the first day. Joe's title is design director, but he, he really does. He, he does that job and he does it beautifully. He's a great designer. He's, uh, he's very talented uh, in many ways. Working with him has been, been amazing. And uh, working with a talented designer who, who also has a good work ethic. He's uh, a f an incredible fine artist as well as a designer and all this. He's a great painter also. He sketched Evangeline Gasly. He, he gave me the sketch. I sculpted it for him. So I, I worked I, as his sculptor. It was his concept. He, and, and he had a very strong concept from beginning to end. Evangeline came out of the, it's sort of like a mix up of Tim Burton and Streisand and Billy Munster and all the stuff that I like. I like a lot of the, you know, the Munsters, the Adams Family. I always enjoyed those TV shows and movies. I've collect, you know, I've collected the strides and stuff over the years. There's just something about kind of like that glamorous, darker, gothy type of stuff that I've always been attracted to. So that's where that kind of grew out of. I did a sketch based on something. It was probably right after like Corpse Bride and you know, and uh, the Adams Family. You know, just watching those television shows, the idea I think was always kind of there. I just didn't do anything with it at the time. And then Robert and I were talking one day, and he says, "Well, you know, we, you know, we had, he had done Ellen and Wild for Wild Imagination, and he said, you know, if you have any ideas for a new line, we should talk about it." And I said, "Okay, great," and I did. So I did up a sketch and showed it to him, and he liked it. So um, he sculpted Evangeline Gasly for us. When he brings me something that, that has such a strong uh, design aesthetic, such as Evangeline, I, you know, I was I was very open to it, and. Uh, I took my liberties on the sculpt, so I felt okay about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which was good, you know. It was great that way. But I learned uh, more through business first and then through the art. I learned that if you want to grow, you have to let go. And uh, when I brought Joe in, who's, who's an accomplished professional, who knew pattern making, knew design, he, he knew all this stuff as well or better in some instances than I do, uh, it, it gives me uh, an opportunity to go off and do something else. And, uh, you know, sometimes that gets me into trouble, but for the most part, it's, it's been amazing because it helps, it helps me, you know, th think of ways to build the company and, and look at different business opportunities. So uh, having somebody of his uh, expertise has been amazing for me. It should sit so that it's more like this. Okay. So it, it's really a little exaggerated. off, yeah, exaggerated. So this side comes and the, maybe the back comes down like that. Okay. You see? Yeah. Yes, this is the menu we need to decide. We have. Uh, I've been working for Robert for 15 lunch. years, so I'm his personal assistant and I also do all the event planning and archive all our history. Robert is the best person in the world to work for. We have a great working relationship and we also have a lot in common, like collecting dolls. When I was a kid in Indiana in the 50s, uh, we lived in a, a small town that was Good Midwestern roots, you know, hardworking people, but you know th there wasn't a lot of glamour. They were these were practical people, and and I was a bedazzled little boy, so I you know I needed I wanted to see where the glamour was, and I think in Bluffton, the hardware store sold toys. I think that's how it went, and I would go in there at Christmas time and look around, but. Uh, what other than art supplies, what really fascinated me were the dolls, and I would, uh, you know, I'd look at these. I remember them being high on shelves. I must have been short, uh, but I'd look at these things, and these dolls just seemed so beautiful and so glamorous to me. And I would just, I would, I would just be, I'd just stare at these things. I, I collect a lot of different things, and I'm, I'm probably on my third lifetime collection of things. I think the 50 glamour thing is where I'm really kind of, uh, that's where my study is and uh, where I you know, probably know the most about. 
is, is those things that I saw up there on those shelves many years ago um, that kind of, you know, make up the, 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 the most of my collection, I think. And here we are in the basement vault of the bank, and uh, this is where I keep the special stuff. And uh, there are quite a few special things around here, special to me anyway. Uh, one of the things that is, is probably the most special are the early dolls that I did, the things that got me uh, motivated and uh, you know pushed me forward to do, to do my company. Um, right here I have, uh, I have a couple of very, very early dolls. This is an, uh, a very early Sculpey doll. Um, all handmade. I made it on a very rickety wire armature. Uh, she is, she is uh, you know, a handmade wig, pretty badly made. Uh, she's seen better days. Uh, it looked a little bit better when I, when, I, when I did her originally, but not much better. And then this one's, this one's very special. This is the first porcelain I did. Um, she has porcelain hands, legs, and head on a cloth body. Kind of a very simple structure, but when I learned porcelain making, that's when I realized that I could uh, mass produce. I mean, very small amounts, mind you, but I could mass produce. So um, she's pretty special. That's why they're down in the vault. Then I have another uh, one that I think is I mean, it was probably a pivotal doll in, uh, in my early development and one that was very special to me. It's, it's a uh, it's Horseman Cindy doll. When I was a kid, this is the doll that my parents got me for Christmas one year. I guess I, I had asked for a fashion doll, and this is what they got me. Now, uh, this is not the exact doll. That doll was played with t you know, until she fell apart, but uh, I, it took me a few years, but I found a mint in box example. But uh, she's, she was a pretty glamorous girl even then. She may be my inspiration to go into fashion, who knows. I started sculpting late in my art career. I was 29 years old. It finally dawned on me after you know being almost 30 that that um, figures and dolls and all that were sculpted. That artists sculpted these things, and once that clicked, I thought I have to try this. So um, my first attempt was pretty meager. It was a uh, paper mache uh, head, which I happen to have here. I always keep this thing around because uh, it reminds me where I came from. <laughs> but this this was the first head I did. Uh, in retrospect. It, in, you know, with some knowledge, it wasn't so bad for a first attempt. But I, I looked at it, thought it was awful, and kind of put it away for about a year and didn't sculpt again, you know, till, till I was in my 30s. But I, I just kind of put it on a desk uh, where it proceeded to rot, because that's what paper mache does if you don't scoop it out. It stunk for a while, but I still couldn't throw it away. And eventually, I dipped it in paint, which you can see here. And uh, um, when I picked it up out of the paint, I thought, wow, it looks like a, it looks like a, you know, it had some sort of human look rather than the gray dark paper mache. So um, that's, that got me motivated to try it again. And then once I, once I really started and there was no stopping me. It's a, it's an amazing process sculpting. Um, I'm, I started out my career sculpting one way. It was, I would look at the form, the outside shape and the outside form and try to try to mimic that in my sculpts. And I, I got pretty good at that. That's that comes from a fashion drawing sort of thing where you're always looking at shape rather than, you know, any in going any deeper than that. And I, I got by on that for a long time. I was able to get nice form and nice shape. But I realized later if I want to get to another level that I really have to learn anatomy and you know and that's that's been a pretty recent development. Um, uh, I started taking classes again a couple of years ago, and uh, I, I'm really getting to know anatomy better. And, you know, I'm always late at things. You know, <laughs> almost you know in my mid to late 50s, and I'm still uh, uh, going to school to learn this stuff. But uh, you always got to try to get better. Now, um, once I get past this point, once I get to the place where I'm happy with this thing, um, this will. You know, I, I clean it up as much as I can. I have a, a, a great guy I've worked with for a number of years in Chicago. He's an engineer, and uh, I'll send this off to him. He'll um, take this and he'll cut it uh, apart at certain areas. Like he'll cut the head off, the arms, and the legs, and then he'll make molds of that, and then he'll put them into um, 
uh, wax. I have a sample of wax here. This is wax, and it's it's like a candle wax, except that there's fillers and stuff in this to make it hard. So uh, it, it's it's a very hard wax, and uh, the purpose of this is so that you can f fine tune it, you can polish it, and clean it. It's a long and involved process. We're pattern makers primarily, let me say. And s pattern makers and sample makers. Yeah. You do the prototype, start with a sketch, finish with a finished product that hopes to look like the sketch. <laughs> I used to make human hats and now I make doll hats. It's, it's actually, it's, it's a lot of fun to make the doll clothes. Uh, we get to work on all different periods of time and contemporary and historical, but the hats are definitely one of my favorite things to do. Uh, gives me a little more um, creative freedom because uh, I'm working with what materials we have so you know Joe and Robert they give a sketch and um, you have to hunt out the fabrics and figure out how you're gonna create that and it's a little more playful sometimes finding the, the tools That's we've been doing. together for almost seven years the four of us together. I mean, That's, other people are in and out, but... Yeah, I, th I think it might be six, but... Close. Yeah, you came in a little after I did. Yeah, yeah. So, six years then. I came in in 2005. Right. And how many years have you been here? Fourteen. Almost fourteen. But with Carol, thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> she came a year later. Months, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was really, really when you guys came on board that we became, like, a more cohesive team. Before that, there was just more divisions and um, stuff. It was this this group that really did uh, bond. Yeah. Say. This guy, he's got some texture to his hair, so we ordered it with curly fiber. Um, I'm gonna cut it, and he's gonna have a bit of a wave over his face, and then gel it back so it looks like a man style. I'm working on one of a kind 29 inch Betsy. Um, I'm just practically copying our 16 inch version and um, I put it together. Uh, Joe checked it already and he made a few changes. I'm gonna raise this a little bit and this is too wide. So I have to remake it with the changes. Um, that Joe made. What I'm working on here is a copy of this doll. This comes from the Theatre de la Mode, which was done right after World War II in Paris. The couture wanted to show that they were still alive after the war. So Robert actually acquired a couple of those dresses, and this is actually on the wrong doll. It's supposed to be 28 inches, this is 22. But I put it on the doll so that I could see the way the sleeve hangs, which is very tricky. They were trying to prove how couture they were. And I'm trying to duplicate it on this doll. It's a very interesting sleeve. You can actually see it on the other one as well, the way it drips. And I really can't get that drip quite as well because the change in fabric. It, it's, it's an amazingly gratifying um, retrospective to, to really see um, the a, he has this amazing talent, and he has a vision, and uh, he's grown from, from somebody who really had insecurities, I think, in the beginning about taking the step to having a relationship where there was a supportive person to say, you know what, you've got this, you really want to take it to as far as it can be uh, brought. And it's astounding to have come from somebody who really did feel um, modest about his talents 
to somebody who's now recognized really across the globe, that people come from all over the world to participate with uh, Tanner events um, and to, to see the numbers of uh, phenomenal dolls that are out there that grace people's homes is intensely gratifying for him and for me to be a part of it, to have helped him create that, but the talent is all his. Uh, Harris and I met about 25 years ago, and uh, I, I, I've talked. I, I talk a lot about the game changers in in, in the doll, in, in my doll life. But uh, Harris was a major game changer in my life. Harris encouraged me to, to just you know to jump in and do it. Uh, so you, there, there wouldn't be a Tonner doll company without Harris. If if that hadn't happened, I I may still be in New York City. I don't know, but. Uh, I'm very glad it did, on a number of levels. In this business, you never know, I, I never know when I pick up the phone, what I'm gonna, what's gonna be on the other end. And uh, a couple of years ago, I got the most bizarre phone call. Um, somebody says, um, Nancy said to me, she says, uh, I have Gene Simmons on the phone for you. And I said, the exercise guy? And she said, no, 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 that's Richard Simmons. The, the, uh, the, the Kiss, the singer, I said, no way. I picked it up and sure enough, it was Gene Simmons. And I had the most interesting and weirdest <laughs> experience. He was so friendly and so uh, uh, giving about his life experience and how he saw business and everything. And you know we're talking about kiss dolls and all this kind of stuff. He says, "Well, what are you planning?" And I'm telling, I'm talking about little projects here and there. And he says, "You don't think big enough." And that was very, very powerful to me. It's like, you know, somebody who obviously thinks big enough is telling me that I don't. I did a lot of long, hard thinking, and I, I started thinking about toys again. Uh, fast forward, uh, a collector in, of, in Kingston contacts me. So I decided, I decided to meet this collector, and uh, uh, his name's Jason. Well, getting to work with a hero, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Thank you. Robert um, is really just such a role model, and uh, I've been following his career, you know, for a while, and he just never ceases to amaze me, and I get to work with my best friend. He was not only a fan, but he's a toy designer. And he, he's worked in the city and he's worked for Toy Biz and he has, he has a great uh, background. Um, he has a lot of friends in the industry. So, we, you know, one thing led to another. We started talking and we get, you know, hey, we ought to do something together. And uh, we came up with this idea of maybe we should start Tonner Toys. Just the, the level of creativity that, you know, we get to uh, shoot back and forth with each other and uh, we get to follow our passion and really have fun every day. And especially seeing our product come to life and the reception that... Yeah, that's gotta be one of the most, I mean, that's gotta be, that was the biggest thrill, that had to have been. When we, when we got the first package back of, you know, all the work we put into the, uh, to the first toy project and then to, to um, get that back and... Oh. You were like that. a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't wait to tear into it that's, and, yeah. you know, just kind of play with them, you know, the actual fi finished product or near finished product, and you are the same way. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. I'm always like, you know. Are you pleased? Very, very oh, excited. How about, how about you? Yeah? Oh my god, yeah. Look at that face. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. We pulled together a couple of partners, and sure enough, we started Tonner Toys. So I'm very excited to say that, um, our, we prototyped and de we designed and prototyped our first thing, showed it to Toys R Us, and we have an order for um, uh, August delivery in time for Christmas. So, uh, first time out of the gate, and we have an order uh, at Toys R Us. Great.